In chapter three, I asked my readers a poll uh, to determine what would be in chapter four. And the, the question was who should make the next move? And the um, overwhelming answer by uh, three times the next one was that Cade is to make the next move. So with that, chapter four, posted the 4th of April, 2020. In general, I find office meetings a waste of time. On a productivity level, the Friday morning office meeting was a fail. However, seeing everybody's dogs, cats, hamsters, and children brightened my morning. It also made me feel lonely. My favorite potted violet wouldn't dance around wearing a towel cape or jump on my keyboard. When the meeting ended, I wasn't entirely sure we covered everything on the agenda. Not that it mattered. My boss would send around an email Monday morning changing every decision made during the meeting. And I would ignore it as I as did everyone else. Without Julianne, the house was too quiet. I'd seen posts for the local shelter had too many abandoned dogs thanks to a rumor they could spread the virus. A cat would be helpful. I worried about mice in the basement. I spent the next hour surfing the shelter websites for cats and dogs. When the phone rang, I jumped at the unexpected sound. Julianne's photo popped up on my screen. Hey, how was the drive back and how is your dad? Good and weird. I mean, my dad is good and the drive was weird. I stopped at a hotel and I was the only person within about 10 rooms. The manager said they were keeping the rooms empty for two days between guests and cleaning the rooms twice. There were a lot of trucks on the road, but not many cars. We brought dad home last night. I never thought I'd be so happy to say it's only a heart attack. I'm glad he's home. I got up from my computer and paced the circle through the connected rooms, dining room, living room, hall, kitchen, dining room. It was a good way to get some steps in. Cass was so cheap. If it wasn't so unnerving using public bathrooms, I'd love to do a tour of the U.S., but then take your own teepee, wash your hands, sanitize hands, wipe gasoline dispenser thing it got old fast. I can imagine it did. At least she had enough toilet paper. Mom says to thank you for the toilet paper. She was down to her last roll. Did you find the one I left you? You left me a roll? With the bag of chocolate peanut butter eggs. No, I didn't find either of them. Believe me, I, if I had chocolate eggs, I would know it. I left them on... Oh no, Julianne's voice faded. I mean, I left them on the front seat of my car. I just found the other bag of candy. I laughed. At this point, what else could I do? Sierra, I'm so sorry. Please tell me you found some toilet paper in the stores. Well, about that. I told her about the pregnant lady in Cade's post. What's Cade's last name? I'm on Facebook now and I know a few Cades. I sat at my computer and opened up the buy, sell, and trade post. His post was still up. Cade Morgan. Found him. Wow, he is hot. Do you see that water skiing photo from last year? No, I didn't go through all his photos. Mostly I was worried he might be some stalker wannabe. Don't tell me you just waved from your locked car window when you met. Pretty much, I winced. I think he heard me lock the car door, too. Julianne's familiar, exasperated sigh spoke volumes. Not every guy is Craig. It's been years since he... Thankfully, she didn't finish the sentence. I was more worried because it was nearly sunset and he came right up to my car. He didn't stay six feet away. He might have brushed it off as social distancing then. I have nine friends in common with him. Do you want me to find out more? I was pretty jumpy last night. I'm sure he doesn't want to know me better, even if he joked about having good, clean fun. I could hear Julianne typing and hope she wasn't doing what I thought she was. My friend Evelyn, you know, the Zumba teacher, went to high school with him. She says he's a really nice guy, really funny. I figured he had a sense of humor from his post. 
His senior year, he gave every girl in school a carnation on Valentine's Day, and he paid for them himself. That is just too good to be true. I knew too well that good deeds didn't make a good person. I heard Julianne typing again. I think you should reach out to him. He gave me his phone number. Call him. I don't think I should. No, it's perfect. You have a government-mandated distance relationship, a whole month to get to know him without actually doing anything together. Isn't that what introverts want? She had a point. No hand-holding, no lingering touches, no kissing, nothing to play havoc with my senses. It might be just what I needed. I feel so forward calling him. Then message him or send him a friend request. You live in an 80-year-old house. You don't need to act like you're 80. Her lecture wasn't new. I'll think about it. I swear I could hear Julianne rolling her eyes. And don't you dare contact him through your friends. You're no fun, she whined. So you say, but you're still my best friend, Julianne laughed. I'll call you on Monday, and you better have good news for me. Our call ended, and I returned to my work. I preferred lining up numbers and spreadsheets over dealing with people. Numbers don't lie. The problem was I kept thinking about contacting Cade. Then I switched my browser to Facebook. Julianne was right about the water skiing photo. 24 hours later, I'd started three messages and one text message, walked six episodes of Poldark, and ate all of my peeps. I should text him a polite thank you. It was Saturday night. He'd probably be, or not, there really wasn't much to go out and do. I walked around my house a few times. I only had 7,865 steps. I should get a pet. My phone pinged an alert from the messaging app. Cade, thanks again for the hand sanitizer. I debated only a moment before answering. Sierra, I liked your notes on the teepee. Cade, I promised some good clean fun. I had no answer, so I sent a smiley face emoji. Cade, can you guess the movie? And this part is all in emojis. If I figure how, I will add them right here. Envelope, man, heart, woman. There was an arrow emoji on the envelope. A boy and a girl. The answer was obvious. The question was, should I answer and send a movie of my own? End of chapter four. So I asked multiple questions this time to my group. One, most important, does Sierra answer? And what is the movie? Envelope Man, Heart Woman. Okay. If so, what movie might she use to start this game? And I asked them to answer in emojis. So I will share that with you in chapter five. Um, going forward, I'm going to describe the emojis and I will put them in if I'm smart enough to figure that out. I don't have any children living at home with me right now to fix my video issues.